Uh, tonight we're going to have to do a little bit uh, extra singing and a little bit, and I thank the Lord for that tonight. And I just want to deal with, about once a year I do this, I deal with singing just for a few minutes, the importance of it. How many like to sing? How many are good at it? Brother John, all right? He gonna, he, he's going to come up and sing a duet tonight. He and, uh, make, make it a trio. Me, myself, and I. Amen. But anyway, hey, y'all love singing. I love singing. I, I love singing. I, I'm a loud singer. I make a joyful noise, all right? You say, well, I'm not a good singer tonight. God never told you to be a good singer. God told you to be a joyful one. Singing unto the Lord. How, how important tonight is singing? In your Bible, it, uh, the word sing is found 119 times in your Bible. The word singing is found 29 times, so it's, uh, it's 246 mentions of singing in the Word of God. So we find that a lot of singing. Uh, these psalms, they were put to, uh, in, they were sung, most of them. Uh, Barbara and I last night, family devotions, uh, we were using Psalms 48. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. How many have ever sung that? Man, beautiful song. I thought about that. We used to sing that in church. So these were set to music. But they had a message behind them. This is not that uh, repeat something 500 times in, uh, in, in one song. But these, these are meant to help. They're songs that encourage the people of God. It, these psalms here show us that people have been where you've been. By the way, if you're going through hard times, you're not the first one to ever go through a hard time. A lot of these songs that we sing over here uh, in the hymnal were written in some of the hardest times of their life. And one of the greatest examples would be Psalm, uh, the page number 145, H.G. Spafford wrote a song called, It Is Well With My Soul, after he lost uh, family members at sea. And I just, boy, we sang that tonight. I heard the bells on Christmas Day. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. He wrote that on Christmas morning during the Civil War. He had two uh, sons. They were uh, in the army. He had no idea if they were alive or if they were dead. He had no idea. And he looked around and said, Hate is strong that mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill toward men. So these psalms that were written to encourage the people of God, to let them know they've been there and done that. Listen, and if they can do it, we can do it, all right? Same way with Hebrews chapter number 11. So I thought about that singing. What, what is singing tonight? He said that we are to come before his presence with singing. I, I, I don't think I've ever heard anybody coming through the front door singing. I think it'd be good. I, hey, just come through the front door singing. Hey, making a joyful noise unto the Lord. Come into his presence with singing. That tells me that God enjoys singing. That's why there's so much attention given to it in here. Singing's important in our life. It's an outward sign of an inward reality uh, called redemption. I, I like to make up songs. I like to sing when I'm out working around. A lot of times when I'm out on the lawnmower and can't anybody hear me. I just get up and just sing for a little while. But an inward reality. Over in Psalm chapter 71, he said, O my God, unto thee will I sing with a harp, O thou Holy One of Israel. My lips shall greatly rejoice when I sing unto thee in my soul, which thou hast redeemed. We find that when the psalmist sang unto God, he did it with great joy in his heart. A lot of feeling behind it. I enjoy listening to God's people singing. I love congregational singing. Uh, boy, I, I just, I like to get out there uh, before God ever called me to preach. I sing out in the congregation just like I sing up here. You say, well, you sing loud up here. You should hear me out there. I remember little children, five and six pews ahead of us, turning around looking at me. Uh, when I was singing, just lifting up. I was behind a couple one day, and they turned around, and they said, surround sound, all right? I was right in behind them. Listen, I'm talking about singing tonight. 
the importance of singing. The reality of an inward redemption. Then we sing as an expression of joy and rejoicing in honor of the Lord. Over in Psalm 66, he said, Make a joyful noise unto God, all ye lands. Sing forth the honor of his name and make his praise glorious. I believe we ought to rejoice in the Lord, but we ought to also honor him with our singing. You know, we live in days when a lot of people don't, they no longer sing. They sit quiet and they listen to other people sing. Listen, get involved in the singing. Just get involved. Hey, you can, and it, you say, well, I don't have a good voice. Then lip sync. Make somebody think you're singing, all right? We had a grandson. He didn't like to sing, and they put him in the corral, or not a corral like a uh, you put uh, animals in, but anyway, they were going to get up there and sing. It was back when they were masking in the school systems, so he just put a mask over his face, and he just pretended he was singing. He wasn't making any noise. Don't be that type. People beside of you want to hear you sing. They want to hear you sing as unto the Lord. Singing is necessary for a worship service. I, I call it the prelude to the Word of God. What it does is it gets the hearts of God's people ready to worship. It puts them in a mood. I, I'm not one of these that believe that we uh, have to be on an emotional high all the time. I don't believe that. But at the same time, I think it's important that our hearts are made ready to worship God. And that's done through singing. That, that is a preparation that we make. He said, come into his presence with it. Singing is a command of uh, biblical worship. I, we just read in Psalms 100 and verse number 2, he said, serve the Lord with gladness, come before his presence with singing. Now, that verse of Scripture is a commandment. That's not come in singing if you want to. He said, you make a joyful noise unto the Lord. But he said, you come into the presence of God with singing. That's how important that God makes singing within a church. Now, I don't like singing uh, to be more than the preaching. I've been in a lot of churches where they just have singing, never open the Word of God. I believe the most important thing we're going to do tonight is open this. This is what we're here for tonight. This is the, the, the word of God is the important thing. We find how singing is important. It's important to the believer tonight because it lifts your spirits even in troublesome times. Over in Psalm 42, he said, And in the night his song shall be with me in my prayer unto the God of my life. You get in trouble, sing. The Bible said God gives sing, songs in the night. That God will encourage our hearts in the night. A lot of times I don't sleep all night. I'm better at it than I used to be. But used to, I'd just get up. I'd get up and just go into the other room, not wake Miss Barbara up and read the Bible or do whatever. But at the same time, we find the importance. It's important to you and I together. Over in Acts 16, the Bible said at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. They're in prison and their hands and feet are in stocks. And at midnight, they began to pray, and they began to sing praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. In the midst of a hard time, they just had a little worship service at midnight while they were in stocks, where they were tied. So I want to look at just two realms of singing very quickly tonight. One, private singing, and then two, public singing and worship. I believe private singing is probably as important, if not more important, than it is singing in the house of God. You get to the book of Ephesians. He said, be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. I believe it's important that we sing. Miss Barbara doesn't sing a lot at home, but she whistles. You didn't know that, did you? She walk around the house whistling. She whistles pretty good. She walk. I hear her whistling. I usually try to hide because she's got something on her mind uh, when she's whistling. 
but she whistles around the house. Singing is important in our lives. Listen, if we ever lived in a day where you need to be uplifted, it is today. We live in days of discouragement, days of disappointment. Now, a lot of things are just, they're, they're not done the way they should be done. Uh, some of you older folk, you remember the good old days? Uh, some of you will never know the America that we grew up in. I grew up in the 50s. I was born in the 40s, grew up in the 50s, early 60s, Barbara and I. And boy, things were so different back then. I mean, they were different. Uh, uh, the people were different. Uh, integrity was different back in those days. But the importance of it, speaking to yourselves, because the individual is filled with the Spirit of God. You get full of God, you'll sing. You get full of God and you begin to sing out loud. I remember as a little boy going out to my dad's workshop. And as I went out there, dad didn't know why I was coming down the garden path. I'd go out there. I could hear my dad singing, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I can still hear. Dad had a good baritone voice. In the shop working by himself. And then I would come in and I would catch him singing out loud to the Lord. Singing unto the Lord, spiritual singing. These are songs of praise for what God has, one, promised you, and then two, for the things He's performed for you. I thank God we've got a book full of promises here in our hand. But somebody counted the promises one time. I forgot how many thousands and thousands of promises are found in the Word of God. Uh, God makes a lot of promises to His children. And then he brings them to pass. And then we look back at what God has accomplished in our life. Uh, here lately I have been thanking God so much that in a right manner I have need of nothing. I mean, you find that in the Word of God. It's in the Laodicean church. Revelation chapter 3 and they were lukewarm. Listen, because we've got things that ought not make us lukewarm. It ought to heat us up on the inside. How blessed are you tonight to live in America? Think about this land. Listen, and let me just say this, and you can politicize it. Don't let them give it away. There are too many men and too many women that died that we might have what we have here tonight for us to just give that thing away. You know, a lot of people give things away because it didn't cost them anything to start with. I was going down the road one day not long ago and somebody had peeled rubber. Now, you young people know what peeling rubber is, all right? I'm talking about piled it up. I don't know what kind of automobile they had, but I mean, there, there was a pile where they start off because the tires were spinning and you could see the black marks down. And I thought to myself, probably dad and mom paid for the tires. If something doesn't cost you, hey, if something doesn't cost you, then you're not going to appreciate it. Young people, you work for the things that you have. You work. Have a work ethic. But then we praise God because God gave us the opportunity to do that. Dr. Alfred Smith, uh, he published a book, Al Smith's Treasury of Hymn Stories. And I knew Dr. Smith personally. A tremendous man of God. Love to hear him sing. Very wise man. He was at Bob Jones University for a lot of years. And he's just a tremendous man of God. But he loved music. And he, he just simply said that there are stories behind the hymns. And so he wrote books, Singing and Melody in Your Heart. And then we've got public singing is found here. But it's important to what we're doing tonight. I want you to get involved. Get involved. Listen, worship is not a spectator sport. Sometimes we're kind of like watching a tennis match. Ping, 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 and you, we just sit and we, we enjoy it. Listen, you ought to get involved in the church services. You'll never get anything out of church until you learn to put something in church. When you put something in church, it's then that you'll get something back out of church. Make a joyful noise is a command. These four words, hey, what a blessing they are. When they, the word means to split the ear. 
to sound an alarm. I've had people admonish me for being too loud. They say, preacher, you're trying to show off. I'm not trying to show off. That's just the way I sing. Now, that's personality. My personality is very outward. Barbara's is just the opposite of that. You say, well, she's meek, and uh, let me tell you, she's not as meek as you think she is. She's just quiet with it. Amen. Old, old saying, still water runs deep. Still water runs deep. But I thought about the command. Then unto the Lord is a direction. Our singing ought to be directed to God, not to people. You might say, well, somebody not, may not enjoy listening to me sing. But then tell them to plug their ears up. If they don't want to hear you to sing, just sit there with their fingers in their ears and you just sing anyway. The direction. All ye lands is to the people. All people everywhere. What a joyful thing it is to sing. Sing. Just sing. He goes on down and said, serve the Lord with gladness. The singing is a preemptive of that because it's a heart condition. If I ask you tonight how many are glad you saved, probably about every hand would go up. It's better felt than telt, but listen, we need to tell. We need to serve notice. Learn to sing. Sing on your job. Sing in the church. Sing in the choir. Sing specials. You don't have to be a professional singer to get in our choir or to sing a special. You don't have to do that. We're not here to put on a show for somebody. We're here to worship God with what we do. Come before His presence is just simply worship. So he said this, come before his presence with singing. I want to thank tonight the people that sing at Temple Baptist Church. The people that sing out there. Sometimes I quit singing because when I'm singing, I can't hear you singing. Sometimes I'll just stop. Sometimes I've lost my place. Sometimes I just stop. I, I get tickled at these professional singers. Sometimes they get off on the wrong place and they act like they're crying and everybody just praising the Lord. They're not. They're just trying to figure out where they got off base so they get back on again. That, hey, we're not. We're not here for that. But I love to hear you sing. I love to hear you involved in it. Get involved in singing in your life, and it starts in your personal life. I just want to end with one little short illustration. Years ago, Barbara and I hadn't been saved long. Uh, we had a preacher come in, and I listened to him preach and listened to him labor in the Word of God. And nobody ever gave a holy grunt. Uh, they just sat there like a knot on the log, and he'd preach his heart out and go home. He'd come back and preach his heart out and go home. And God told me, you're not saying anything either. So what I did, I went home and stood in front of the mirror, and I practiced. I practiced saying, Amen, preacher. Amen. Glory to God, preacher. I practiced. I wanted to urge him on. You know, that's kind of like sick him to a dog. I'll never forget the first time I thought, well, tonight's going to be the night. And my pastor began to preach. And I said, amen, amen, amen. I like never got the word out. Hey, you need to practice at it. You don't need to be good at it. But you need to practice at it. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye the, that the Lord, he is God. Amen. So we're going to do that tonight. Amen. I'm going to stop right there and I'm just going to turn off. I just wanted to deal with singing just for a moment tonight because I think it's important in a church that everybody get involved. Involvement is one of the main things in a worship service. You need to be involved. Amen. So Clint, I told you I wouldn't be long tonight.
Pray for our working men that are in the choir. That are not in the choir tonight.
As the choir goes down, let's stand one more time. Turn to hymn number 434, and let's sing, Oh, Little Town of Bethlehem. Hymn number 434. Oh, 